Hello, we've got a um, lab chart trace in front of us here, which is um, a finipress reading from a student's finger, um, which was taken during isometric exercise. And you can see here at the start of the exercise, there is an increase in uh, blood pressure. And at the end of the exercise, the blood pressure decreases again. Um, but the question we're asking is, what's the change in blood pressure? What's the change in systolic, diastolic, and mean arterial pressure? Um, we could derive all of these numbers by for the raw, from the raw trace here. Um, you can see I'm scrolling through the trace. And you can see it's got nice peaks and troughs indicating the systolic and diastolic um, pressures. And I could select all these peaks. I could drop a little DVM window just to make my life easy. And I could click on that peak and go, yep, that's 149. I could click on that one and go, yep, that's 142. And I could do that all the way through the trace, uh, make a note of the time, and make a note of the pressure. And then I could work out what the mean systolic pressure was. Um, bear in mind, with these kind of traces, you can't just select an area like this and ask what the mean number is, because the mean pressure over this entire trace will be the average of all of these data points over this time course. And of course, this is sampling at a thousand samples per second, therefore it's going to mean of all these thousand data points per second. And that is not the mean arterial pressure, nor is it the mean systolic and mean diastolic. The great thing about Lab Chart Reader is it has um, built in functions to calculate the peaks and the troughs. And in the case of Lab Chart Reader we've got here, it'll also do mean arterial pressure, has the right equation in to do mean arterial pressure. So I'm going to set this up very quickly. This is in other tutorials as well on this site, but this is specifically to look at Finipress data. So we go to Setup, we go to Channel Settings, and we add three more chat settings. Uh, you can see here this is labeled from a previous tutorial, so I'm just going to label this one Systolic Pressure. There we are, Sys. This one is going to be MAP for mean arterial, and this one's going to be dire, diastolic pressure. And I'm going to have a look at these colors and make sure I'm happy with the colors. I make these lines a little bit thicker uh, just because it's fun. And then we've got these, and we press OK. And it's set up three blank channels, and these blank channels are ready to be populated uh, with uh, a calculation. I'm going to zoom out so we can see the trend in the upper trace, and then we can hopefully follow the trends in the lower trace. So first and foremost, I want to set up systolic pressure. What we want to do is we want to measure the cyclic maximum of these data, so the highest point in each cardiac cycle, and plot that as a single line. So we click on cyclic measurements, we choose blood pressure as our source, we choose maximum, which is the cyclic maximum, and then down here we choose what preset um, trace we've got, and we've got, it's just off the bottom of the screen, there we are, we choose finger pulse because this is taken from a finger pulse pressure trace. You'll notice immediately as I've chosen finger pulse, some of the little dots at the big top of the screen here have disappeared where the computer hasn't been able to detect the pulse. And this is because we've got this detection adjustment setting here. And we want to slide the slider to the left to become more sensitive, and the right becomes less sensitive. You can see how I've slid it to the right, and there are no peaks detected. Go back to the left, and it seems to detect all of the peaks. And that's brilliant. That seems to have worked nicely, so you can scroll through and every peak has been picked up. We change our decimal places to 1 just because that makes life a bit easier for us. Check that everything is correct, click OK, and now you can see it's plotted a single line which represents the systolic pressure. We're going to come back and check that in a minute, but in the meantime, let's get on with doing diastolic and mean arterial pressure. So diastolic pressure, do that very quickly as well. Drop down, choose cyclic measurements, blood pressure is our source. Our measurement is going to be minimum in this case, and our finger pulse is our preset. We zoom in. We make sure that all our peaks are detected. You can see there are some peaks not detected. So just drop this line back a bit. There we are. I think that's good. And if we're happy with that, we've chosen minimum. We've chosen our decimal places. Press OK. And it's worth just dragging a little DVM window, one of these little viewing windows and just scrolling your mouse across and making sure these two numbers are different. You can see here it's telling me that systolic's 156 and diastolic's 98. Um, that would seem right looking at this trace where systolic's about 150 and diastolic's about 98. That's perfect. So I'm happy to, to accept those. These finger pressure traces always work. They just, they just work very well with this automated system. There are some traces, and you'll see this in other tutorials like um, respiratory gas measurements where the min and max measurements, the automated measurements, don't always work. So um, bear that in mind and look at the other tutorials just in case you get confused by that. But for this kind of thing, uh, for, for pulsatile flow 
uh, and especially pulsatile pressure like this, it tends to work very well indeed. And you can see there are no glitches here, there are no funny jumps and bumps, it just seems to follow very nicely the trace. And again, we're going to check that in a minute. And last but by not means least is the mean arterial pressure. Remember, mean arterial pressure is not the mean of all the pressures. It is um, a special equation designed to calculate mean arterial pressure based on the pulsatile flow. So we choose cyclic measurements, choose blood pressure as our source, and down in the measurements window is this equation, one-third max plus two-thirds min. And if you look up in your textbooks, you'll realize that um, mean arterial pressure is one-third systolic plus two-thirds diastolic. So we click on him, we zoom in again, choose finger pulse, and we adjust the adjuster until we see all of our pulses appearing. I am repeating this every time. There was no need to repeat this every time because it does remember the last detection setting that you used in your other cyclic measurements, but I'm just doing this just to make sure that we uh, get the hang of what we're doing here. So we've got that right, everything's selected, we've got measurements set up right, we've got our decimal places set up right, everything's happy, click OK, and now we end up with our mean arterial pressure plotted in green here, and we can drag our DVM window and again have a little look at those numbers and make sure they fit that looks great. So I'm going to close those windows. Just to prove this is working nicely, I'm going to select this area here and I'm going to zoom in using the zoom window. Okay, and I'm going to show those three traces. And I'm happy with that. If I um if I zoom in again. If I select one of the peaks up here, for instance, it's telling me that blood pressure is 158.77. If I zoom down to this window and hit the same point, it's telling me it's 158.8. That would imply that 158 is the systolic pressure. And I can do the same with the diastolic pressure, 96.27 here. Click down the diastolic pressure at the roughly the same point, and it's saying 95. So that's fine. It's reading the diastolic and systolic pressures accurately. So it's always worth just eyeballing your data. Don't trust everything you see on the screen. Just make sure that what you're seeing is what you think you should be seeing. So we're happy with those data now. I'm uh, happy to export these or save them. And now it's very easy. You can just select an area of, uh, of data here. You can add it to your data pad, just as you've done on numerous occasions before. Go to your data pad, and it's automatically created these extra B, C, and D columns because we've set up three extra channels. The first column is showing you mean blood pressure. That's not mean arterial pressure. That is a mean of the blood pressure readings, and it doesn't mean anything. It's just a random number. It's the average of all the data points, so ignore that number. This data set here, B, which is systolic mean, in our case is uh, channel B. It's telling us that this is the mean systolic pressure, in this case, 146. The second one, C, is giving us mean, mean arterial pressure, the average mean arterial pressure over the time we've selected, 105. And the third one, which is mean diastolic pressure, so the average diastolic pressure over the time we've selected, 85. So that's how you get um, measurements of systolic, diastolic, and mean arterial pressure, and also quickly how you will work out what the average is over a short period of time or a long period of time. Hope that helps.